well, I always knew my boys were gonna join the military. My oldest, Steve, from the time he was probably sixth grade, he wanted to join the Army, loved the Army. Scott's came as a shock, but his senior year, he decided he was gonna join. Um, Steve actually enlisted the summer before his senior year. Um, I was all for it, supported it, come from a military family. Um, so I kind of knew what to expect, but it didn't prepare me in the least. Um, from the time I had to sign that paper saying I was okay with it to the time they swore in, I think I cried way too many times. Um, but they both chose the Army. Um, the one is now in reserve. Scott is now in the reserve. Steve is still active duty. Um, but yeah, it's no matter how much I think you try to prepare for it or think you're prepared for it, you're going to cry. Ball like a baby. Yeah. My daughter came to me um, and said, um, it was like after she signed the papers and everything, because she was, she was out of school, um, had a full-time job, going to college, and she comes and says, I want to see the world. So she says, I signed up for the Air Force. So, and the funny thing is, the only place she ever got deployed was Texas and Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, my son, he decided his senior year in high school that um, he wanted to join the Air Force also. So he signed up for six years. <laughs> So, yeah, it takes a lot out of you. <laughs> yeah, Chad, Chad went to the Marines. He said he wanted to do the best. Now I know why you're crying. <laughs> so that's, he considered the Marines the best. So that's why he wanted to go. Um, so yeah, he went to the Marines. He was in for four years. Yeah, that's hard. Like, what's the process like for the parents? So your child says they want to they want to be in the military. So when you sign your child up, do they give you some kind of like hear something to help the parents understand what's going to happen, or is it just like figure it out? No, you you pretty much have to figure it out. Yeah, um, they, you don't get nothing. Yeah, nothing. And I think a lot of the time has changed. I think there's some. There's, there's a little bit of a gap between when all of our kids joined. Um, I don't know about your son and daughter or your son. By the time my boys went in, um, they had a Facebook page for their troop that you could follow. Um, yeah, they didn't and, have that. Mm -mm. And I found myself watching that page daily. Like, can I see my son? Can I see my son? Where's the picture of my son? Yeah. <laughs> Um, very rarely did I get to see my son, but I at least had that. And I think that helped get me through boot camp. I don't, I don't know how I would have handled it had I not had that. Yeah. I lived with my phone in my hand, <laughs> waiting for a phone call. Yeah. All that first phone call. Oh, the you first get... phone call's horrible. Right. When right they after get they there. get off the bus. You, you can hear the, the fear, yes. the nervousness, and all you want to do is say, it's okay, baby, I'll bring you home. <laughs> and you can't. <laughs> they say they got there safe, uh -huh. and, and that's basically that's, it. I'm here. They yep. And basically. hangs up. And I then mean, you wait for the letter. Yeah. That gives you their address. Yes. That's I, th I think so basic, is, is, is boot camp, basic training, whatever the branch calls it, I think is probably the hardest to get through. Once you get through, there's still a lot of challenges after that, but I think boot camp is designed to toughen the moms up too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they basically go in as young boys. Yeah, and girls, there are babies. Whatever. Yep. And they come out as men or women or. Yeah. It's Were hard. you as shocked as I was when you went down for their graduation? to see how much they grew up. Oh yeah. And 
six to ten week time. It, it, oh yeah, you almost don't recognize them. No, yet. it's a big no. change. Well, in fact, my oldest son, he walked right past me and I didn't recognize him. Like my husband had to stop me and be like, here's your son. <laughs> well, I had to try to find my son out of the whole thing and I could not pick him out for the life of me. No, it's so hard. <laughs> well, they all look the same, but they're Mm -hmm. Uniforms, their, their hats, uniforms. and their hair yeah. shaved, and yep, yeah, and they all stay in the same way. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Yeah, it took me forever. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the time frame when they can call because if my son came to me today and said I'm going into the military and in boot camp, you know, I'll have limited communication. What's that really like? Very limited, limited, and it's at the control of their drill sergeant. Mm -hmm. Um, they have to earn the privilege to be able to call home. Um, so basically your communication that you should know up front is it's going to be through written letters. They are still, send them stationary envelope stamps so that they have no excuse mm -hmm. not to send you a letter because right. that's about the only way. I still in my office desk have every letter that my boys wrote to me during basic training. Now I'm going to cry on that one. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> um, and with each letter that they send, you could just tell. It, it goes from fear to, I made the right choice, Mom. You, you, could, you could almost hear their sense of pride the further they go. And it's just, it's a great thing. It makes them grow up not being able, I think, to call and talk to Mom whenever it gets hard. They're forced to grow up because of that. Mm -hmm. But letters, letters, lots and lots of letters. And then the first time you get to see him at graduation, oh. you just, you start hugging and you just don't let go. <laughs> After boot camp, what happens? They go to their, tra their technical training. Yeah, their training. Their school. Their schooling. Right from, or, uh, Basic, basic, yeah, because I know the Air Force, it's Sunday night, they're getting on a bus and going to their tech school. So what did each of your kids do in, as their technical skill? Chad's was, um, he did like, he fixed generators, equipment. One reason I cried so much when my boys joined was, um, they decided, I begged them to at least choose a skill that would translate if they decided that the military wasn't for them, that it would translate into civilian world. No, both my boys decided to choose something in the infantry line. Um, one of them went airborne, the other one is a uh, Cav Scout, Calvary Scout. Um, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, my daughter um, went in um, as a medic, um, and then my son was um, heavy equipment mm. operator. So well, my daughter signed up for four years, and then my son went for six years, and then um, so he got stationed in Germany, and that was miserable. <laughs> Because you don't get to see them, they don't get to come home on leave when they have leave because it's too far and too expensive. And so yeah, so you know the whole time that they're stationed over there, you don't get to see them right after basic. Yeah. yeah. Even when they do have leave, they're only yours. They're only supposed to be gone, you know, so many days. But you're also only allowed to travel so far. So. I mean, that's hard if you live, you know, farther away than when you can get back, then you're not allowed to go and leave, so. What, what do you think is the most unexpected thing that, ha that happened through your whole experience? Like, is there something that you really just didn't see coming? Um, yeah, when my son got deployed within, what, two, three weeks after completing AIT, um, that was a devastating blow. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, yeah. You learn not to watch the news. You don't watch <laughs> news at all during that time. It's probably the most terrifying. Yeah. Um, when you talk to them on the phone, um, especially right after they get there, no matter how strong your child is, it's a scary place. When they did, did they all deploy back to duty? I only had one deploy. Chad went to Afghanistan for seven months. What, you don't have to talk so much about what that was like, but how did, how did you cope with that experience? I mean, obviously that's like the real deal. Avoid the news. Right. Uh, yes. I, I mean, mean, it all costs really, you avoid. You really have to avoid the news because you. Well, they tell you. My son told me, don't, yep. don't watch the news. Yep. And then if you get any phone calls asking you questions, you don't know nothing. Yep. Yeah, because yeah. they're even limited on what they can tell us. Yeah. Like, you don't know their exact location, where, they're, where they are. You can look at a map and be like, I know they're somewhere in this vicinity, <laughs> being the country. You don't know where. Um, you have an APO that you have to mail things to, and you're restricted on what you can mail them. Uh, when they call home, they don't want to hear mom crying. <laughs> That's the last thing they want to hear, um, especially when they're gone for holidays. We were able to FaceTime Steve, which is, yeah, we got to Skype. We could Skype. Yeah, yeah we got to, we Skyped for Christmas. Um, Steve and his little brother were very close, so he called that that morning, which was I think nighttime for him, and uh, he watched Peyton open all of his gifts. So it was pretty cool. But it's that that it's hard when they're when they're gone like that. It's hard when they're stationed in another country. Yeah. But when you know that they are front and center, they're in harm's way. You yes. don't know from day to day. And there's times they're in the field and you can't contact them and they can't contact you. It could be two weeks, three weeks with absolutely no word. And it's almost to the point where the phone make, makes you jump because you just, you don't know. It's, it's, it's terrifying. I can tell you the scariest thing I ever experienced while he was deployed was, I'll never forget, I was standing out back. I was on the phone, because any time he called, I'd go out back, so I, because a lot of times I'd have to talk loudly. And he, he's talking and talking and talking, and all of a sudden he goes, hold on a minute, Mom. And it's like it wasn't clicking where he was. You know, I'm just on hold. And I hear all this commotion going on in the background. And I'm like, oh, good Lord, Steve. And I'm looking at the time and I'm like, is he ever going to come back? And I'm still hearing all this commotion. And all of a sudden it's like snapped. And I'm like, my son's in Afghanistan. Oh my God, my son's in Afghanistan. Steve! <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was, sorry. I thought I was going to throw up out back because he wasn't coming back to the phone and I refused to hang up. I'm like, I am not getting off this phone until I know my son is okay. Um, what seemed like forever passed and he got back on the phone. He goes, mom, are you still there? And I was like, I'm still here. I said, what is going on? And he, w he told me that they were taking incoming and they had to get their, what he called their battle rattle on. I didn't know what scared me more, the fact that my son just told me they were taking incoming or the fact that he was unbelievably calm about the whole situation. And that's when he told me because um, a couple weeks after he had gotten there, I received a text out of the blue. Now my son is not a, uh, he's not one to show his emotions, um, but out of the blue, one day he sends me a text and says, I love you, mom. And I lost it. I remember going to Amy, I said, something is wrong. And uh, 
at the end of that phone call, he told me, he said, do you remember when I sent you that text that said, I love you? And I said, yeah. And he said, that's the first time I experienced it. And he said, I thought I was gonna die. <sighs> so to say they grow up <laughs> is an understatement. You learn to tell your kids you love them. Oh, more than sometimes <laughs> to the point where you think they've got to be getting annoyed with you, but <laughs> I don't care. You're going to hear it. <laughs> so what do you do to find comfort in knowing they're going to be okay? It's the thing you don't know. You don't you know. Just, you, All you, you just hold your breath basically until they get home. Yep. I mean, and you, you try to talk to other people that may have experienced what you're going through, you know, get some advice from them. But even that's a little comfort. You just, yeah, there's, you hold your breath, you hold, <laughs> you hold your breath and you pray. Yeah. <clears throat> Whether you go to church or not, you pray and you probably pray harder than you've ever prayed in your life. So in doing your own research to try to figure out, you know, what's going to help you get through that time, what, is there really like one thing that really helped give you a peace of mind? Um, like I said before, the one person had said that mom groups on social media really helped because they could kind of, you know, talk back and forth about what's going on. Did you guys have anything that really helped you cope or like friends that had been through it or anything? I didn't. I didn't. Have I didn't know about any. Groups. I didn't. I didn't either. Um, I mean, now I think it's totally different. You know, because they have technology is yeah, technology is different. So you have Facebook, and you know, so you have all these groups that get set up, and even when the you know kids are in boot camp, you have photographers there that are taking pictures. Yeah. You know, so you can get on Facebook and get on these groups and. <coughs> they didn't have that yeah. and they even had one for um, my son Scott he was stationed in Alaska and they had a page for his battalion up there um, and you kind of got to see their day-to-day -day life and you know what they do for the family activities for the families that are stationed there things like that and that's great but when it comes to deployment no they're nothing yeah you don't have any because you can't put that on social media. I mean, they're really restrictive on what you can put on social media. So you're, you're, you're kind of on your own. Mm -hmm. um, I had family that had been through it and I was able to talk to them, but that's a very little comfort because you just, you don't know from day to day, you just don't know. Even, I know I had to set up a P.O. box. <laughs> For him to mail to you. Right. Because he didn't want my, mm -hmm. he didn't want me sending mail with my real address. Really? Yeah. Security yeah, of? security. You know, in case their your packages get lost or get stolen or something, you don't have your real address on there. How long were the deployments? Uh, my son was gone for nine months. My, yeah, my son was gone for seven months. Mine was six months. So where in the world, where in the world, but where in the world did your kids get to, where are they stationed at? Um, Steve is at Fort Bragg and Scott is now in the reserve, so he's home. Thank God. Chad was in North Carolina the whole time until 
there at the end when he was um, sent to Afghanistan. Um, my daughter, like I said before, Texas and Ohio, she never went anyplace else. And then my son was in Germany and then um, came home from Germany, went to Montana and then went to, he was um, deployed to Alaska and then deployed to Africa. But both of my kids are out now. So, so the one that wanted to travel didn't get to, travel, <laughs> and yeah. the other one got yeah. to go all over the world. <laughs> yep. And he doesn't let her forget it either. <laughs> And she was actually in for seven years where he was in for six. So. Wow. <laughs> wow. But yeah. See, my issue is Stephen listed as reserves because he was in high school. He had to finish high school, so he had to go reserves. Got deployed as a reserve. And when he came home, he then re-enlisted active. So that was a gut puncher. <laughs> yeah. But he... Uh, He's doing fantastic in the Army, and I look for him to be a lifer. Um, scary. I don't want him to ever get deployed again, but I think all of us can agree, as a parent, you can't be any more proud of your kids than you are yes. when they serve. It's, I think it just puts a whole new level to being proud of your kid. I agree. I think every time someone says something, we just, it's yeah. my boy, that's, yeah. that's, that's my, my kid. Boy. That's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah. The proudest moment. <sighs> that's hard, that's hard. I don't know. Do you think your proudest moments when they say they're going to? Say they're going to enlist or? Um, I don't know. Proud is scary. Yeah. yeah. That was scary. Because I didn't know, you know, until he was signing up that he was <laughs> enlisting. You know, he called me on the phone and, hey, Mom, I'm signing up for to go into the Marines. Oh, I can't even imagine. Yeah. So, yeah, that uh, that's scary. I at least had some preparation on mine. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> oh. Congratulations, um, the proudest moment? I mean, that was... I think it's hard to, to pinpoint a proudest moment because they accomplish so much. Yeah, they do yeah. so much. I mean, much. every time you talk to them, and just watching them grow, being proud of the men that they have grown into and the, the, the women they've grown into, mm -hmm. on my part would be, that's my proudest moment, is they've grown into successful, decent human beings. But I can say probably my happiest moment was when Steve came home from deployment and surprised me here at the bank. I still have that video every year. I think I share it because I wasn't expecting him home for, I think, another month. And he knocked on the doors at 8 a.m. and we weren't even open yet. <laughs> he came back and surprised me, and that was probably the best feeling in the world. What do you think would be, if you could tell a mom going into this, what would your top piece of advice be? Don't let them go. <laughs> Lock them in their rooms. <laughs> uh, I had a, a friend of mine, she used to say, I'll break his legs. <laughs> um, just make sure they know how much you love them. Yeah. Hug them tight.